I'm not exactly a rules expert. I mean, I'd like to think I have a pretty decent handle on most of the things in Magic the Gathering that come off pretty often, but every now and then there's a rule or interaction that just makes no sense to me whatsoever. Not to mention the fact that if it wasn't sometimes level two judges explaining it, I would probably be calling them idiots. There are quite a few very infamous examples of really strange and weird rules and interactions in Magic. One of them being uh, Humility and Opalescence, or Blood Moon, or Selbala and Panglacial Worm, or just the entirety of Crow Clan Ironworks. But those are more so the most interesting or most complex rules in Magic. I'm talking more about the stupidest. Now, what I'm going to explain to you may not be the all-time stupidest rules interaction in Magic, as I'm personally not much of a rules expert, but this is just an interaction I find very strange and stupid, and I think probably goes against some of the original intention of some of these cards. Well, there's probably going to be a variety of people in the comments explaining to me why I'm wrong or why this is just commonplace in Magic. It's just my view of a very stupid interaction. Now, today's example is focused on a very strange card, and it's a card that is almost entirely unique in Magic that goes by the name of Darksteel Garrison. Darksteel Garrison is like essentially an equipment, but for lands, you can pay a fortify cost, which is kind of like a quip, to attach it to a land, and then the land then begins the trait of being fortified, like equipped, and uh, it does something. This is the only one of these cards that does it like this. Uh, it's from Future Sight, which is a block of R&D just trying the wildest things mechanic-wise. And while Dark Steel Garrison itself is not necessarily the only way to showcase this rules interaction, I thought it was a kind of fun and interesting way. Now, let's say that you had a land that has been fortified by Dark Steel Garrison. In this example, that land is a Cathedral of War. Your opponent is at two life. So then you cast a Burden Touch, which is going to turn your Cathedral of War into a 2-2 with Indestructible. You also play a uh, Brave the Sands, so your Cathedral of War will have Vigilance. You then move to your combat and go to attack your opponent. When you do, Cathedral of War's Exalted trigger will go on the stack as it's the only creature you're attacking with. This trigger will give the Cathedral of War plus one plus one until end of turn. And while that trigger is on the stack, your opponent is panicking. They're a two life and you've got an indestructible two two coming their way and they have zero blockers. And that Exalted trigger on top, it just, it's, it's, it's gonna ruin things for them. But then they have an idea. In response to that Exalted trigger, before it resolves, they cast a shock targeting your Cathedral of War. Then, they, in response to their own shock, cast a Sudden Spoiling targeting you. Sudden Spoiling, if it resolves, will turn your 2-2 indestructible creature in into a plain vanilla 0-2 that will then die to the shock before the Exalt trigger can resolve. Now, Sudden Spoiling has a very uncommon ability in Magic called Split Second. Split Second means that once the spell that has Split Second is put on the stack, in this case, Sudden Spoiling, no player can activate abilities or cast spells. The only thing players can do is make mana with mana abilities, which means you actually can put a trigger on the stack while Sudden Spoiling is on the stack. So, in response to them casting Sudden Spoiling, you can tap your Cathedral of War to add one mana to your mana pool, which will then trigger Darksteel Garrison's ability, putting its trigger onto the stack that's going to give your Cathedral of War plus one plus one until end of turn. This is because Split Second does not affect triggered abilities. Now, neither of you have anything to play, so we're going to let the stack resolve. First, Cathedral of War is going to get plus one plus one until end of turn, and be will become a 3-3 with Indestructible. Then, Sudden Spoiling is going to resolve. And while this does set your Cathedral of War's base power and toughness to a 0-2, because of the Darksteel Garrison's trigger, it's actually going to become a 1-3 without Indestructible. Then, Shock will resolve, and will deal 2 damage to Cathedral of War, which is now going to be a 1-3 with 2 damage marked on it. But it's still alive. Then, finally, Cathedral of War's Exalted Trigger will finally resolve, giving it an additional plus one plus one until end of turn, making Cathedral of War a 2-4. Then, without any blockers, Cathedral of War hits your opponent and you win the game. But that's not the only stupid interaction involving Split Second. Ever heard of a card called Willbender? I mean, it's a pretty uncommon card these days, but it is the literal perfect answer to Sudden Spoiling or any Split Second card. You see, Willbender has an ability called Morph. Well, actually, it's not really an ability. I mean, I know, you look at that text and say, yeah, so you can cast it as for three mana and it becomes a 2-2 face down, and then it has the ability to be turned face up for one and a blue later. Nope, not at all. <laughs> Turns out that Morph, a bit of rules text that looks and is worded like an ability, is actually a quote-unquote special action, like a mana ability. So believe it or not, Morph doesn't actually use the stack. 
you can flip up a morph card at any time that you could be activating a mana ability, like while that sudden spoiling is on the stack. So you could, instead of going to all the trouble with the Dark Shield Garrison and triggers and whatnot, just flip over your Willbender and straight up counter it. Yes, counter a split second spell. The card that, while it doesn't explicitly say it on the card, is practically designed not to really be counterable or extremely, at the very least, extremely difficult to interact around. But its weakness of not stopping triggered abilities resolving means that Willbender's morph trigger will resolve first and can counter sudden spoiling. And while your opponent cries, looking at the counter spell in their hand in confusion. Now this one's more of a personal note, kind of about how targeting works in Match of the Gathering. When you go to cast a spell or activate an ability that has a target, which do you think that you should do first? Do you think you should either pay the cost for the spell of the ability first and then choose the target? Or do you think you should announce the target first and then start paying the costs? Instinctually, I thought costs. I mean, whenever I go to cast a Thelon Magic, I'll typically say something like, all right, gonna tap my mount for red, use that red to cast a lightning bolt targeting you. But actually, that's technically wrong. What I should actually be saying is, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and cast this lightning bolt targeting you, and I'm gonna use this mountain, tap it, add a red, and use that red to pay for it. And while I know this seems like a very small and minute change, it actually can massively affect some really strange and weird parts of magic. And I think one of the best possible examples for this is a card called Tortured Existence. When you read this card, or at least when I first read this card, I kind of had this thought process toward it. I'm like looking at that activated ability, I'm like, hey, this says one black, discard a creature, then you choose a target creature card in your graveyard and return it to hand. So largely speaking, I'm like, well, if, if I pay the cost first, I can just, you pay one black, discard a creature card, then, because I've paid the cost, I then go to target a creature card in my graveyard, I'm gonna target what I just discarded and bring it back to hand. But, no. <laughs> Because in reality, the sad, sad reality that isn't magical Christmas land, unfortunately, you do have to announce the target of Tortured Existence ability before paying the costs of Tortured Existence ability, meaning that you cannot grab the creature that you plan to discard as it is currently in your hand when you go to target. Now, this isn't really a stupid rules thing, arguably speaking. I just think it's really counterintuitive and, uh... I think it's dumb. <laughs> like, I understand why the system is like this, and it's not just for cards like Torture Existence. There's a litany of reasons why it's important that you target first, pay cost second. It's just one of those things that when you start getting into magic, it's like, well, I have to pay the cost of a creature before I play the creature. It, it, it's counterintuitive. So this has been what is, in my personal opinion, and very much my opinion, probably not objectively at all. One of the stupidest rules interactions in all of Magic the Gathering. Thank you very much for watching, and please let me know what are some rules interactions that you think are really stupid. Besides Selval Pug Glacial Worm, as artful as that is, and if you don't know what that is, please go check out Fish MTG's video on it. It's masterful. Thank you very much for watching, and have yourself a very nice day.